Hey guys, it's Cameron with Addicted Fishing and in this very special tutorial, we're gonna be going over all things twitching jigs for salmon. Now when it comes to twitching jigs, it's a fairly new technique. It hasn't been around as long as bobber fishing and as long as drift fishing, so the technique is constantly evolving. And so we figure we're gonna put this full seminar length video together for you guys to answer a lot of your questions about how to do this extremely fun technique. We're gonna go over some of the bases, equipment, colors of jigs, styles of jigs, and then we're actually gonna fish a couple of these holes on the river, and then a little later on, we're gonna hop in the sled and show you how to use some strategies on targeting salmon from the boat using this awesome technique. Now, before we get to the fun stuff and we start fishing these rivers here, I really need to talk about the equipment that you're gonna use because, you know, like most of the techniques in the Northwest where you can float fish with a longer rod and then you can drift fish with it, you know, you really need to have equipment that is specific for this technique. Using a shorter, faster action rod is gonna put more action on the jigs with less movement in my arms and it's gonna entice more salmon to bite. Now, one of the rods that I really prefer to use is the Akuma Guide Select Pro, the 761M. It's got a really fast tip and it's got a really strong section. It's also a one piece rod because like I said before, when we're using these jigs and we're fishing heavy cover, sometimes you've got to pull those fish and you have to put the wood to them to get them out of those spots. Um, using a really light rod isn't going to lend well to doing this. And then also, we use a half ounce, a three quarter ounce, even, and even up to a one ounce jig. So having a heavier, shorter rod is going to do a lot better than using these nine and a half, ten and a half foot soft rods that are really loopy and flimsy. Now, whether you're new to twitching or you've seen this a lot in the videos, you'll notice that we use a lot of spinning equipment. There's a couple reasons for that. First off, castability and ease of casting. You know, especially if you're a newer angler or you don't want to deal with the backlashes that a bait casting reel will give you. The other reason too is because the balance of the rod. When you're constantly twitching and you're constantly working and you're fishing, you know, six, seven, eight hours a day kind of a thing, Having that spinning reel underneath and having that weight there, it balances very nicely in your hand instead of trying to hold that casting reel on top of the rod the whole time. Now, if you're looking to purchase an actual setup for twitching, start with that spinning reel size in a 30, 35, and maybe even up to a 40, but I wouldn't go outside that size range just because you're gonna have too big of a reel for too short of a rod and the balance isn't gonna be real good. So now we're gonna line our reel up with a type of tough line, preferably in a 20 to 30 pound test. It's really imperative that you go with a tough line because you get sensitivity and you get zero stretch. When you're trying to detect that jig along the bottom or whether you're trying to feel for a fish or whether you're getting into a snag, you're gonna lose that sensitivity unless you're using a braided line. So I know I've already talked about it a lot, but having the right rod, reel, and the line is gonna help you catch more fish when it comes to this technique. It's really one that you don't wanna to step too far outside of what I've explained because We've seen it and as this technique is developed and we were starting to use eight and a half, nine foot rods, well, the second we dropped into the shorter rods and the faster action rods, we started catching more fish. The second we went to braid, we started producing more fish. The second we used spinning rods and we realized that how much nicer they balanced in our hands, we started catching more fish. So like I said, if you're gonna get into it, be sure to get some technique specific equipment. So if you've been to the fishing store lately, you have seen that there's a lot of different twitching jigs on the market, but what I'm gonna be using today are the Addicted Tail Out Twitchers. And I kinda of wanna go over exactly what is a twitching jig for you guys. So most of these twitching jigs have a large head, whether they're a half ounce, three quarter ounce, or one ounce. And then they've got these, these bodies that are made from these brushes right here. And they've got this little extra mylar that adds a lot of movement, adds a lot of flash to this jig. You're trying to get these salmon to do an instinctive strike. You need to get their attention. And sometimes we're fishing in conditions that only have a foot or two of visibility. So using stuff that has like high contrast colors, a lot of brightness, a lot of flash, a lot of movement will get you guys more strikes. So when it comes to colors, as you can see here, I've got lots of different styles of twitching jigs. You know, it pays dividends, especially when you are on the river and it's really crowded and there's a lot of pressure to have something different than the other boats are seeing, especially in clear water. Like I know a lot of people think that clear water, you wanna go with your basic purples and your basic blues, you know, something that's a little more toned down. But sometimes if every boat or every angler in front of you is throwing that color, it pays to show up with a really bright yellow and pink or a really bright 
yellow head with a green body, something different. So as you can see here, these are this is my one ounce assortment and I've got lots of different colors that's gonna match the different variables and for the pressure that's gonna be on the river. And so besides color with the addicted tail out twitcher, we've come out with a different variety of sizes. And this is really important when you are trying to adjust this technique into the different styles of water and the different styles of fishing, which we'll be going over here in a minute. But one key thing that I wanna show you guys is as you adjust the size of the jig, you're really not doing much to change the profile. What I've got here is I've got the half ounce, the three quarter ounce, and a one ounce addicted tail out twitcher. So a lot of people will be like, oh, well, a one ounce jig, that, that's too big for coho. Like you shouldn't be using those, you shouldn't be casting those. Well, the reality is, is the one ounce profile is just about the same as the half ounce. Like, so you're not really changing a lot in that, but what you are gonna do with the one ounce is be able to fish heavier water, be able to keep that jig down in those strike zones, being able to dig them out of these boulders and stuff. And so you're gonna, you're gonna catch more fish and you're gonna feel more uh, while you're doing it. But for the most part, I do end up using a lot of the half ounce and the three quarters. So if you're gonna go out there, maybe get a good rich assortment in the half ounce and three quarter with a couple one ounces just in your pocket, just in case. Now the Addicted Tail Out Twitcher is a very good, very durable jig. The paint that stays on the head is gonna be stronger than anything else there out there on the market. The jig's gonna last long and it's gonna fish really well. But guess what? Those Tail Out Twitchers aren't the only gig in the market because now we're gonna talk a little bit about some of these hoochie jigs. So I've got my addicted tail out twitchers. Now, why would I even want to bring a hoochie jig to the river? Well, it's because this jig has a much different action and a much different style when it comes to fishing this. This jig, when it has the eyelet right here on top of it, it comes up and as it falls, it doesn't, it doesn't just fall straight up and down like a twitching jig. It's gonna to slide to the side, it's gonna dart, it's gonna have some erratic movement. And even on the uplift, it's gonna shoot off to the side and do some weird things that sometimes when you have fish that are really, really, really wary and you need that extra little enticing action to do it, hoochie jigs will do it. Also, they work really good for if you're having to fish, um, if you're having to flutter the jig above cover and trying to get coho to come to it. The reason why I say it is because they don't sink as fast which can be good and can be bad, depending, like I said, what type of cover you're trying to fish. So you get into a spot that's really snaggy, maybe even a little bit shallower, maybe it's only one or two foot deep, three foot deep. You don't want that twitching jig to fall right to the bottom without giving you a chance to put a little movement on it or to flutter it along. And these hoochie jigs work really well for bouncing down. And instead of falling right into the snag, kind of working along the side and giving you a chance to put some action on it and get some more strikes. So when it comes to colors, guys, it's just like the addicted tail out twitchers. I just wanna have a good assortment, lots of whites, pinks, glows, you know, for when the water's muddy or a little more turbid. And then I also wanna have a lot of blues and purples and blacks for when the water's clear. You know, you're still just matching kind of those salmon colors. And also, you wanna have that assortment, like I said, if that pressure is on the river and you just wanna be different from everybody else. Now, we're gonna take the rod over there and we're gonna show you guys how to work these jigs, start catching some salmon. All right guys, you got the equipment, you've got the jigs. Now we're gonna talk about actually how to work these in the water. So I'm not in a real fishy spot, but I'm in a good spot to show you guys what's going on here. And basically what I'm gonna do and what I'm looking for with the twitch is I'm looking for something that's probably from like my waist to about the top of my head when it comes to movement on my rod. I don't wanna be a guy that's twitching way up here because what happens is if I'm twitching up real high and I get a strike or I need to pull a jig out of a snag or a, or, or a spot that's kind of grabby, if I'm already twitching up this high in the water, I have no room to come back. And I'm not gonna get a good hook set into a fish and I'm not gonna be able to pull that jig away from what I'm doing. So most of the time that when I'm twitching where I can, my action and my jig, I'm gonna try to keep the rod in front of me and I'm gonna try to keep the rod tip from like I said, the waist to maybe just over the top of my head one key thing that I'm always looking for with twitching jigs is the fall of the jig. I don't want that jig to slowly sink to the bottom. I want to fall. That fall is what entices a lot of strikes, whether I'm using a hoochie jig or an addicted tail out twitcher. How I'm doing that is as I'm twitching, I'm watching my line. And every time I lower that rod tip, I should almost see like a little bit of slack or a little bit of that line just hang in the air just a second. Because if I'm not putting any tension or if I'm not putting any movement on that jig, it's gonna be free falling. That free fall is super, super important. 
So now keeping in mind that I want the jig to free fall, I also got to put movement on it. So it's a delicate balance of being able to cast out, move the jig, allowing it to free fall, and taking up a little bit of line almost in between every single beat. Now, depending on if I'm casting upstream or downstream or what the current's doing, every time I cast, I need to be able to feel that jig being lifted up off the bottom or else it's not gonna even have a chance to free fall. But if I was to cast out and not do any reeling, especially if I'm gonna cast out in some slacker water, stagnant water, every time I lift that rod, that jig is coming towards me a little bit. If the current's pushing it towards me, it might be moving a lot. If the current's pulling away from me, it might be allowing me to lift this rod every single time and to be able to feel the jig every time and move the jig every time. That movement is what gets the strikes. So a lot of times I'm gonna have a lot of varying degrees on how much I'm gonna to wanna to reel in between beats or in between lifts of that jig. So let me just demonstrate here. I'm gonna cast upstream. And since I'm gonna be casting upstream and the current's gonna be coming at me, it might take a couple cranks to where I'm feeling that jig every time. Now, if I cast downstream, where the current's gonna be keeping tension on the line and the jig, every time I do this, I can feel the jig being pulled down by the current, but I'm probably not gonna to wanna to be reeling too much because it's gonna be lifting that jig up, it's gonna be getting it out of the strike zone. There's gonna be some spots down river and in the sled that I'm gonna be able to demonstrate this more, but just understand that it's not a half crank every time between the beats, or it's not no cranks or it's three cranks. You really have to adjust the amount of line that you're taking up in between beats to where you're fishing and how deep you're fishing. Now, one more thing, guys, I wanna point out, and even though I'm standing here on the bank, if you're working in a drift boat, a raft, or a sled, and you're drifting with the current downriver, if you don't have a lot of cross currents and a lot of seams, it's almost like you're taking the current out of the equation, and that's gonna be a totally different setup. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that when we hop into the sled here a little bit later. But for right now, we're gonna go down and hit the bank and hit a couple holes and show you guys different angles of approach and different ways to fish out some of these spots when you're targeting salmon. So we got to our first spot right here and it's kind of an upper watershed, kind of a canyony, bouldery hole. But one thing about right now is the water's really low and clear. And, one, and I, I've got my braided line tied directly to the jig, which honestly works about 80% of the time. But because it's so clear, because the sun's out, because it's just like, like I said, it's really low water, I'm gonna wanna add a bumper of about six foot of mo uh, uh, fluorocarbon line to this jig. I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. Now, like I said before, adding a bumper line isn't necessarily the only thing that's gonna be the difference of not catching a fish. But man, just because the conditions are calling for it right now, what I've got is some excess fluorocarbon by tough line in some 20 pound, and I'm just gonna add a six foot chunk of that um, to the jig. Now that I've got my bumper line attached to my jig, I'm gonna use a crazy Alberto knot and attach that piece of bumper to my braided line. Now you can use a uni to uni, a blood knot. There's a few other uh, lines that attach a heavier fluorocarbon leader to a braid. So use what you prefer. But once I attach that up, I'm gonna be ready to go fishing. So we're gonna start here in this canyon. We've got some bouldery water. We've got some riffle. We've got a main current that's kind of moving down the middle of the river but we've got all these little pockets and little side seams. Now, I don't think it's gonna be very productive today for fishing, because I don't think a lot of these fish are gonna be on the move or moving. They're gonna be sitting down in some holding water, which we're gonna get into a little bit later in the sled. But what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna show up to these kind of spots, take a couple casts in the middle of the river, and then walk away and think, oh, I fished the spot. The water's low, the water's clear. These fish are gonna be tight to cover. They're gonna be up underneath the riffle, they're gonna be against a boulder, they're gonna be sitting up against some bedrock in a pocket, and they're gonna be really tight. They're not just gonna be sitting out in the open. You know, they wanna hide uh, from us as much as uh, they want to. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start a little bit closer to the bank. I'm gonna work a couple seam lines. They're just right here. And a lot of times too, when I'm doing this, when I'm picking this apart, these casts are real short and quick. Chances are, if there's a fish there and he's gonna strike, he's gonna do it within the first couple of bumps once I put it right in his wheelhouse. So I work that inside seam, we're gonna go to the outside seam there, pick it apart, I'm letting it flow down the stream. It's pretty shallow water, so I'm not letting it sink um, all the way down to the bottom, because like basically if you drag a twitching jig for any amount of time, 
you will be breaking it off and you'll be buying another addicted tail out twitcher. I got a far pocket seam over there. We're gonna let it go. I'm having to reel a lot more because it's working down into the current. A lot of times too, as these jigs move into the bottom end of the current, a lot of times I like to do is just let them kind of fan out and let that current push that jig over to the side. And as long as I'm feeling that jig and still able to let that rod fall and let that line kind of float in the air and to show that the jig is falling, as long as it's doing that, I'm okay with fishing that jig all the way to the end. Now, because there's all these different currents and because there's all this different water moving in different directions, the other thing I'm not wanna, gonna, the other thing I'm not gonna wanna do is just fish one spot. So I kind of worked through this. I'm gonna move down onto that rock and I'm gonna change the angles of where I'm casting into because there might've been a fish over in that other pocket, but because I was straight across from it, when I casted the jig out, the water just blew it right out of that pocket, even if I was using a three quarter or a one. If I get down below it and I cast up to it, it gives the jig a lot more of a chance to settle down and to sink down a little bit further. And like I said, you gotta get these jigs sometimes in their wheelhouse to get a strike. So I'm gonna take a few steps down river and give that a shot. So now that I'm here, I'm gonna cast upstream into that a little more. It's gonna give that jig a little more of a chance to sink. I'm just gonna make sure there's not a fish in there before I move on or before I start changing my spots on where I wanna cast. I'm having to reel a lot because the current is pushing at it, but I can tell I'm bouncing along the bottom there. All right, no dice there. So now I'm gonna adjust my cast. I'm gonna pick another little spot that I need to fish. And because I'm casting and now the current's more straight across, as I'm lifting that jig, I'm not having to reel as much as I did on that upstream cast. Just kind of working it down in the rocks. And now as it's getting a little further down in the run, every time I'm lifting that rod, I'm feeling that jig. I'm still able to let it free fall. I'm changing kind of the cadence of my twitch, the speed that I'm twitching at, just to make sure I'm getting a little bit of a good fall in there. And I'm gonna work it out to the end of the run. Got some rocks right here in the middle. I'm just gonna kind of like throw behind it just to make sure there's not one laying in there, letting it sink a little bit couple twitches just making sure there's not one kind of chill in there in the middle and maybe I'll even make one really close to the bank because a lot of people will miss those fish and like I said sometimes I'm not even reeling sometimes I'm reeling a lot just having that mentality, and honestly, it's just gonna take a lot of practice. You're just gonna have to go down, you're gonna lose some jigs, you're just gonna have to go down to the water, and you're gonna have to, just like I said, have that mentality. You don't wanna be an automatic guy that twitches the same way, that reels the same time. It's just not gonna get it done, especially in spots like this. As we move down to some more flatter water, some riffly water, or even some like backwaters where the water's stagnant, there's not a lot of current, yeah, you can get away with that. But if you end up fishing some of these spots like this, especially when the water comes up, rain, fish are moving up river, you're gonna catch a lot more fish. All right guys, so I spent some time picking this apart. I changed my angles. I kind of want to look, but a couple things here. You know, I didn't see any fish following my jig in. So a lot of times, especially coho salmon, they really like to show themselves. They like to roll in the hole when they're holding. They like to follow jigs in. And I didn't really see much activity, so I'm gonna bail down river. Uh, or I'm gonna bail to actually a different river. But the second thing is, is too, is if you're just trying to learn this technique, try to seek out some of the water we're gonna go to here in these next couple segments, because stuff like this can be a little more difficult to fish, especially when you're trying to get the right rhythm. Try to find some of those backwaters, try to find some of those more steady or current spots. Um, this just worked out really well because we were just filming upstream and it's a good hold of fish and we wanted to see if there's any fish in it. So I think we're gonna run back down and hop in the sled. I think we might get a couple more people to join us and uh, let's get after it.
right, so I came to one of these little steadier spots. We hopped in the sled, switched to the rivers, and got out on the bank here because I want to kind of demonstrate how I'm going to work down this run that's got pretty even current from one shore to the other. You know, when these coho are moving around, they could be holding back in this tail out. They could be moving through the river. So I'm just going to want to make sure that I comb this water completely. And as like Jordan likes to say, and I really like that he says this, fish with your feet. You know, I'm not going to stand in one spot. I'm not going to walk out, cast into that one spot, take two casts and turn around and walk away. I mean, look at how wide this spot is. Those fish can be laying absolutely bank to bank and I've got nice steady current. So really they could be anywhere in here. So we're going to start getting to work. So I've got a nice little soft current seam line here. Water is about four or five feet deep, but like I said before, those fish could be moving all the way through there. So I'm just going to start out by casting maybe just slightly upstream and I'm just going to work this twitching jig back to me. Every time I'm lifting up, I'm making sure that I feel the jig. And then every time I'm dropping that rod down, I'm making sure I'm putting a little bit of slack in the line. Jig gets close to the bank. We're going to work it out a little bit further. Like I said, I'm combing water. I'm hunting these fish. I'm working. Letting the current just kind of drift it down, picking up a little slack when I need to, working it down the run. I'm gonna give one more cast just to go just a little bit further. Like I said, they could be holding out in that main current. Water is real clear, still pretty bright outside, giving it a chance to settle down there and sink for a second. And now I'm gonna start to work it. Now, I wouldn't necessarily consider this a holding spot. There could be fish scattered throughout this run. Like this is not a spot I don't believe the fish are gonna really cake up and uh, crowd up. We're gonna get to those spots here in just a minute. But if I got fish moving, it's early in the run, you know, just coming off of a good rain, or maybe even if the water's coming up, these would be kind of the areas that I'd look to target. Working it down, felt the bottom every now and then, made sure my jig was down low. All right, now I'm gonna move down a little bit. In a normal fishing situation, I would repeat that process. I'd work it out, making sure, but I've got some of this wood structure down here and I happen to know that it's a little bit deeper off this edge. So as I approach spots like this, especially on the bank, like I'm gonna try just to get that jig down and just to work it right by it, try to hover that jig, if you will, because if these fish are sitting tight to cover and if there's something hanging on that log or in that ledge, I'm gonna work it. Maybe I'm gonna go a little bit out past it. Work it into it, trying not to snag the jig, of course. I'm just gonna work it. And now, I'm not just gonna walk away from a spot like that. I'm gonna walk down below it and try to work up to it and just to change that angle because what if those fish are sitting like directly behind the log or tight to it where I'm not able to swing that jig in to that structure? I'm gonna to need to get below it and maybe they're sitting in that pocket water behind it. So I was walking down, but honestly, it looked so good. I'm just gonna do a little flip there and try to like, drag it up into it. I said, I'm bat, I mean, I'm bass fishing salmon at this point. You know what I mean? I'm working structure, doing what I can. And then, you know, heaven forbid I hook a fish right there, I'm gonna make sure that I have the right rod, the right line and the right equipment to rip him out of there because honestly, if I hooked one right there in that spot, it's gonna get pretty rowdy. So as we were walking with the boat, it kind of dawned on me too to say this to you guys. Don't seek out certain spots of water and only fishes. Twitching is one technique that you should be able to do pretty effectively from the top of a river system all the way down and even into tide water. So like, as you see spots like this, as I show you spots like this, don't think that these are the only spots that you can look out to. Like I said, there's times where like, you know, buddies and I, clients and I float rivers where they're twitching top to bottom through transition water, through pools, through tailouts, through riffles. I mean, through, through it all. So like, don't seek out necessarily like the, the exact, these three or four spots that I'm showing you right now. Um, just realize that you can just about twitch anywhere. So I've got some of these logs that are sticking down below it quite, quite a ways. But like I said, water's clear. Fish aren't in too busy of a move. They could be just sitting all underneath that real tight. So if I would only try to fish these logs from the upstream side, I feel like if there was fish in there, the jig wouldn't even be getting in front of their face. You would have no chance at those and you'd walk away and you wouldn't do it. So I'm gonna give it one more shot just up in there. 
And like I said, probably not a fish in here. We are kind of doing this a little late in the season, but you guys get the idea. Fish with your feet, move around, change your angles, really dig for those fish. Use those jigs, get it into structure, get it against edges, dig them out. But I tell you what, we need to go catch fish and I want to get in the boat. So we're going to run out in the boat. We're going to go fish some stagnant water for you. And we're going to also fish from a moving boat uh, as well right now. Okay guys, so Marlon and I hopped in the sled here and we're gonna anchor in the current. Now obviously I've got my Minn Kota Tarova, so I don't need to drop my anchor, but this is gonna be a situation here where we're gonna, where you'd fish if you're anchored in a drift boat or a raft or a sled with some moving current. So let's see what we're gonna do here. So we have a fair amount of current here, but we got a nice soft seam up against the edge. And since we're gonna just be sitting here, what we're gonna wanna be doing is we're gonna wanna be casting slightly upstream just to give our jigs a chance to sink down to the bottom and get into the strike zone. If I cast it downstream right away and started twitching, the jig would immediately flutter up and it's not gonna be away from the fish. The water over there is six to eight feet deep or so. So I gotta give those jigs an opportunity to get down. The more that they need to sink, the further upstream I need to cast. But like I said, kind of judging by what we're doing here and since I'm using a three quarter ounce, I'm probably only gonna to have to cast just slightly upstream get up against that edge, give it a second, maybe even detect the bottom and start twitching from there. Now, every time I twitch, as we talked about before, you can see a little bit of slack line. That line is just kind of floating in the air, letting that jig sink, putting some good action on it. But as I get down to the bottom of the run, or when getting down to past maybe 45 degrees here, I'm not having to reel near as much, if at all, because the current's keeping that line tight. If I was to reel every time, like right now, that jig would just be coming up into the top of the water column. It's not gonna stay in the strike zone as long as, you as, I, as long as I could have it be in the strike zone. Let's it sink a second. And you guys can see with Marlon's high-vis line, every time he drops that rod tip, there's a little bit of slack line floating in the air. Basically, that's signifying that that jig is free falling and it's gonna get struck more by doing that let you know that jig's down and working. So now essentially I've picked up my anchor by turning off my Minn Kota and I'm just gonna drift with this current because we're gonna cover this little expanse of water here. Most of the time, the fish that we find are gonna be laying up on this shore. And now I'm gonna be covering ground, moving around, doing like what I've talked about in like every single one of these spots that we've fished, you know, changing our angle, moving, 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 looking for those biting fish. So since I'm moving with the current, I'm kind of taking the current out of the play here. It's not really having a lot of effect on my jig, so I'm just having to reel in just a little bit every time, just to make sure that I'm not pulling that jig too close to me without sucking up some of that slack, or else, like I said before, that jig is not gonna be moving, it's not gonna be twitching. But other than that, when you're doing this, this can be extremely effective, because you're, like I said, covering ground and you're looking for biters. Yep. There you go. We're letting this one go, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly, not exactly the target species. Not exactly species. the nice big beautiful bee run we wanted, but. But we get questions a lot, people asking if they, That's right. if they eat. If they, if Chinook eat them, well, there's a Chinook and she ate it. Yep. Let's see, sweetheart. Go make some babies. All right, guys, you've seen us fish a couple areas from the boat and from the bank. 
But one other key type of water that you need to seek out when you're twitching for salmon is backwaters or dead water areas. Since you're putting a lot of action on your jigs and your hooshi jigs, you know, you're able to get those fish to bite in those backwaters, especially when the rivers come up and they get real high and the fish are pushed out of the main bodies of water into those backwaters. It can be an extremely effective time to twitch for salmon. All right, guys, we fished a lot of different spots. We fished a lot of different water. I'll tell you what though, if you guys enjoyed all those awesome B-roll shots that we put throughout this video, all those snippets and all those clips are on our Addicted Fishing YouTube channel. So go check them out after this video. There's lots of great episodes where we're utilizing this technique to catch a lot of fish. All right, with that being said, we're gonna get on out of here and we appreciate your guys' support and we want you guys to really share out this video to all your family and friends. But you know what? All that awesome B-roll footage that you guys got to see here, just tap this little video right here and check it out because it's all over our Addicted Fishing channel. We've been doing this technique for a while and man, we've been catching a lot of fish with it. See you on the water.